Rolling forward here, I want to get into my second artifact of, of, of the day, and that's the USN Journal. The MFT tracks access timestamps, right? Remember Mac B, right? It's modify, last access, uh, metadata change, and birth time. Okay, fine. But what about those access timestamps? Well, it turns out that because SSDs can only be written to so many times and, and folks would really uh, prefer not to continue, uh, you know, like overwriting those cells, Windows disable or Microsoft disable by default last access timestamps being updated. They're still there. They just don't get updated. Even when they were there, I'll be straight and tell you when antivirus and EDR and you name it, right, are doing scans across my file system, like consistently, those uh, consistently, uh, those uh, those timestamps were were only as good as my last scan because then everything got accessed again, right? It's kind of like, ah. But there is a separate file, the USN Journal, that provides data showing specific operations that are performed on files. So this provides way more than a simple timestamp when you have the last operation. So create, access, modify, or change our metadata. There are way, way, way more operation types. And then I deep dive a little bit further into this in the class. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick example today. But I do want to note here, and this, this is clutch, right, is that the USN Journal frequently includes references to operations on files that no longer exist on the operating system. And so this can provide me a window into the past, right? One of many, and, and I'm not covering all of those many, right? But this one is one of many that I go to. And it made my top five list. Not only make my top five, it was my number two. And I, one of the first questions I get asked in every incident, right? Whether it's an insider, whether it's breach forensics, whatever, it, the, the question is, what did they exfil? Well, first is, did they steal our data? I can answer that for you without forensics. The answer is yes. And the follow-up of what did they steal becomes a lot harder. But if we think about the normal pattern where a threat actor, insider or otherwise, right, collects up data, zips up that data, deletes the files, sends the zip file out, deletes the zip file, hey, game on, that seems like something that would all be in the USN journal, like copying files and creating new files and deleting files. And again, all in the USN journal, this can help me answer questions that otherwise might not be answerable. Again, it's not my only look into the past, but it's a very critical one that I use a lot. I, I leave this for you with some other use cases, right? Files existing on a system. Anti-forensics is a big one, right? Um, in particular, insider cases, right? I'm not a lawyer. This is legal advice, right? But one of the things we look for you know, in uh, insider cases, particularly, I want to say that, yeah, we're just going to go with in insider cases. Let's go with this. Uh, men's rail, right? Uh, basically, that's, uh, do you have presence of mind? You understand what you're doing is wrong, or is it just a whoopsie, right? And when you run a tool, and then you clean up after yourself, that's men's rail, right? That's, that's you deleting, right? Something, and prefetch files, very common to be deleted. Very, very common to see prefetch files deleted. And so if I can look there and say, ah, okay, not only did you delete a prefetch file or three or whatever, I know these are the things you don't want me to look at. So by the way, guess what I'm going to look at a lot harder? That stuff, right? Um, so again, lots and lots of use cases here, but the, the biggest, I don't want to know what I want to call it here, like sucky part about USN journal uh, analysis is that USN journals, just they're, they're not that long. Right. So frequently, particularly on a very busy volume, I may only have a day or two of, of data on a secondary volume. Game on, man. Like, you know, I like, think about my, uh, my my laptop. I've got a, a two terabyte as my primary two terabyte SSD as my primary drive. I bet my USN journal on that's a couple of days, maybe three or four days, uh, three or four days old. And then I've got my, uh, you know, the four terabyte data drive, um, you know, in the system as well. And I, I bet that goes back the whole way. I'd be surprised if it doesn't, right? So, because there's nowhere near four terabytes on there yet. So, uh, but, but I, I bet months, right? Um, now, so I, I do want to note here that what you're looking for is not the name USN Journal. That is actually the file name. But, but it turns out the data you're interested in is in a special alternate data stream. And this is hugely problematic, and I talk a lot more about this um, when, I, when I deep dive in this um, in the course, but 
uh, with USN journal stuff, uh, you know, if you are copying a file off of NTFS, all of the data streams go away, right? The alternate data streams go away. Like I copied you an expat bar. Some forensics tools don't export the data streams with the, so you can see the problems here mounting. Bottom line here is don't grab the USN journal file, right? Uh, export the stream named dollar sign J, right? Um, now, I, technically, if you if everything works right, your tools, process, whatever, this is technically a named data stream in the USN journal file, uh, which is in the dollar sign extend directory, which you normally can't see, right? Unless you're in, um, you know, God mode effectively on on, on your system. Um, so, but it turns out that uh, turns out that MFTE command uh, works just fine on USN journal as well. So this is my USN, all right? So I'm going to come over here and we're going to go look at Xfill. Um, so what I'm looking for here, oh, I said parent path, sorry, uh, cut. Put that here. And, and of course, no self-respecting, no self-respecting threat actor um, would name uh, their stuff. Thanks, I, I see that guys, or folks. Uh, no self-respecting uh, threat actor would name anything Xfil, right? That was actually gonna be Xfil. Uh, but you see, that's exactly what we're looking at, uh, looking at right here. There was a directory um, that was uh, named Xfil as it turns out, on the uh, basically on the desktop, right? Um, we know that it wasn't created as the, uh, we know it wasn't created as the, uh, you know, name uh, Xfil, right? Why? Because, well, we had a rename. We had a file rename operation, right? This heavily implies that somebody's doing drag and drop, right, on a desktop versus full command line, right? If you think about the way you create a new folder, you create it, it says new folder, what got created as, and then we renamed it, right? Or named it something, right? Um, and so again, you can see here indeed that there was a seven zip created, right? Um, around this. And if we did some deep diving, we could possibly find the files that were exfiltrated. And so I just want to kind of throw this around here. Now, I, I do want to note here uh, as we come over, that's my USN data. Uh, let's see if I can go find, nope, that's not the one we wanted. This is always the, uh, this is always the fun. Ding, 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 ding. Here we go, mft.csv. So if I come in here and I say, hey, let's go find xfill, all right? I got nothing, all right? It's my parent path, all right? So I don't have any files that would have been there. Oh. So I have xfill.link, all right? Okay, well, that makes sense, right? And, and also, again, heavily, heavily, heavily implies um, that we have some GUI operations going on here, right? Um, because the reason we got a link to it is that we accessed it. It's a recent file, right? Um, and of course, Windows 11, you know, Windows 10, and just Windows in general, Windows spies on it. Let's, let's just be real. So, but you can see here, I have data that I didn't have before. Now, I want to throw out here a competent threat actor um, is, is, is going to delete that link file anyway. And when they delete that link file, you probably note here the in use. This means that it's not a deleted file record. We might still have a deleted file record pointing to this file, right? I want you to note here that, you know, despite the fact that there was clearly an XFIL 7Z on the desktop, we, we don't have a record for it, right? So, or any of the files that were in the XFIL directory, right? But okay, right? It could be the case, right? That anyway. You see here though, again, we don't have any of those. We don't have any free file records. And so I wanna note here that we are now obtaining data about views of stuff that happened on the past for which there is no record in our master file table. That is where we go traditionally for our file system timestamps. All righty, let's move forward here. So let's pivot up into number three, prefetch analysis, right? So, some of our uh, Windows systems log prefetch files. This typically means not server. And I say some, it means not servers. And it turns out admins can disable these. And sometimes, right, they get disabled um, as you're building a Windows system. That used to be because of speed, right, um, with the SSDs um, and, you know, the, uh, ultimately the rates with which they can, you know, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, load uh, data. It became not an issue to do prefetching. In fact, None of this stuff is, is designed, none of the artifacts we talk about here are designed for forensics. Microsoft's not trying to make this easy for us. Um, this stuff actually has a system performance purpose, 
prefetch files in a system performance purpose, and they also happen to be useful uh, for forensics, right? So these get uh, located in the C Windows prefetch uh, directory. Again, if you're on a server, no, no good, right? They're just not going to be there by default. Um, and again, if you look back historically, that's because you know typically our servers had the fast spindle drives, right? And our laptops had the slow spindle drives or, or client machines generally, right? Um, so anyway, bottom line, you, if you've got it, you've got it. Now I'll go ahead and throw out here that I've got it on my Windows 11 mobile workstation here, and so. If, if that's the case, right, coming, you know, right from the OEM, um, you know, it, I'll throw out here and just mention that it is almost universally true that you'll see prefetch files on, on client systems unless a system admin has done something to uh, ultimately to disable it, right? Again, that is a configuration option. So, so what am I looking for in a prefetch file? Well, first off, how are you going to analyze it? I'm going to come right back to Zimmerman. In fact, I'm going to talk Zimmerman all day. I, I talk about a lot of other stuff in the course and different ways to go parse data, you know, without using his tools explicitly, but they are good. And, and I want to note here, one of my favorite things about PE command is that it's not processing individual files, although it can. It's not limited to processing individual files. It can process an entire directory simultaneously, right? And then time series those for you, right? Well, time series what, right? Well, let's talk a little bit about this. And again, as I mentioned before, I spend a lot more time on this in class. I'm, I'm trying to jam this into like five minutes of fun, right? And lots of artifacts that we don't talk about, here, right? Um, so, so here's an example of a uh, something I've executed multiple times. It, it's winword.exe. You can see the last time it was run. And on any modern Windows system, so Windows 8 or later, right? Uh, we, have the, we have the last, and I'm drawing a blank here. I believe it's the last eight run times, uh, historical run times. Uh, I could be wrong, could be 10. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's in my slideware, and, uh, but not in this slideware, so I don't have the reference. But alas, I can see previous execution times as well, and these can then be put in a time series. And so, oh, by the way, right? Remember this is the last execution time, and then we've got the last several execution times up to eight, right? We're just gonna go with eight and call it there. But uh, up to the last eight, but then as we go into volume shadow copy, I have whole new collections of prefetch files, right? With other last modify, or sorry, last execution timestamps. That's awesome, because that's a lot of data that we can put back together speaking to activity on the system. Now, practically, there is a limit on the number of prefetch files that are stored. It's 1,024. This typically is not a limitation that we bump up against. And that's a first in, first out. Um, you know, buffer. And so basically there, you know, again, there's a lot that we, we don't necessarily need to worry about there. But I do want to note that you can get a, a ton of, and I say a lot, we don't need to worry about that because typically people aren't running thousands of different applications to go write these things, you know, uh, basically old prefetch files out. Um, now, how do I know if one's been deleted? Well, I don't know for sure, but I can cross check with other forensic artifacts and then separately USN journal, if it happened recently enough. Folks, this is yet another great time to uh, great time to talk about why it is so critical that you do early detection. Artifacts die off, right? Um, you know, a last modify timestamp is only good until something gets modified again, right? And so so that's that's man, that's tough. It's just tough, right? So anyway. Um, you want to get there as quickly as possible, or you end up with a dirty crime scene, effectively, or a compromised crime scene. So again, one more forward here and show a couple of other things that I'm able to go pull out of prefetch, right? Now, something we didn't talk about beyond like execution timestamps and you know, is files. We have a list of files at 10 seconds into execution, files and directory handles that are open by the process. This is fantastic because it allows me to get into things like this ditty, right? Well, what are all of these numbers up here? Well, it turns out these are volume serial numbers. So I know that this is my system root because it's Windows System 32. So I'm going to go ahead and call this my system. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and call this my system volume. And I'm going to go ahead and call this my not system volume. So where is that? It's on the root of not a system volume, right? And so if I had to shoot in the dark, right? I don't since I created this artifact. 
that's the, that's a USB drive. It's a removable media. And so here with a prefetch file, I'm able to show that a user um, opens something from removable media, right? Um, and I can say open something, not save something, because remember the snapshot got taken 10 seconds into execution. Now, there's tons of other things you can do with prefetch, and it's oh, so magical, just so magical. But you know, I, I do want to note here, and I'll come back all the way around to this. You've heard me say a lot about different tools. I, I want to note here, it's, it's the analyst, not the tools, right? The tools put the data into a format that you can read, and then it's on you to go figure it out, all right? And so figure out what, what does this mean? How can I use this to answer those questions? And that's why I always start from what are my outcomes supposed to be, right? Uh, ideally, what are my outcomes? What, what questions are we trying to answer? Um, so in this case, if, if part of the question was, did the user um, rely on USB mass storage at some point? I, I, I can pretty conclusively say, hmm, probably, right? Um, now there are other ways this can show up, right? It's a different volume serial number. But alas, um, you know, we can tie this in with other data to prove indeed that wasn't a problem.